Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel if you are new. Hello, my name is V. I post now tutorials every Thursday and Sunday at 8.15 a.m. Central Time. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on your post notifications. I'm getting right into today's video. I did go ahead and pre-apply the Universal Not Polished Tips. They are pre-shaped in stiletto and I just trimmed them down a little bit. Now I'm taking my hand file and just filing them on the sides, making sure that they're nice and flush to the sides of the natural nail. I'm gonna go ahead and get right into my acrylic application. I'm gonna be doing a very dark set for today's video. The theme is anti-Valentine's Day and while I did struggle a ton coming up with something, I finally threw something together. I hope you guys like it. Um, I tried to be as unique as possible specifically with like themed nails and it is the hardest thing to try to come up with stuff so i did ask my members from the v gang shout out to them they threw out a few ideas and then i kind of just like tossed stuff into this set <laughs> so we're getting started by applying black acrylic this is from not polish and then i'm adding a little bit of red i'm gonna be using tons of deep colors for this set specifically because i want to kind of show the dark side of Valentine's Day. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of sparkle in there. I am using a combination of a fine red glitter called Ruby from Profiles Backstage and then mixed in with that is a chunkier glitter called Devilish from Profiles Backstage. These are both loose glitters. So I'm making sure that I have a wet base either the red, the black works, or in this instance right here at the tip, I did add a little bit of clear just so that it adheres good to that. And I'm just patting it into place and then cleaning up the sides as I usually do. And then I'll go ahead and move around the glitter to place it specifically where I want it and just to make sure that it's all nice and flat. I did go finger by finger deciding on what I wanted to do and I originally was going to do a full black nail but then I decided to throw a little bit of color in there because I am doing some 3D nail art on top and I wanted it to show a little bit more. So we're adding a medium sized bead of black acrylic, patting that down into place and then dragging it lightly down towards the tip and then I'm adding a smaller bead right above that just to kind of fill in that middle section. And then I'm going in with that deep red again. And I'm actually going to be ombre the two. I figured that would help give a little bit of depth with that 3D nail art that I'm going to be layering on top. So just for reference, this ombre does come out a little bit wonky. From my view on my camera, I can't really see what is going on. The glare is so overbearing. So the whole time I was doing the ombre i literally all i saw was black so i did kind of fix it a little bit towards the end but i'm just going ahead and applying that on top and then i just drag it down try to blend it in as best as possible to that black and then on the middle finger i'm also adding that same deep red and I'm just going ahead and starting in that middle section. I lightly pat it into place, start dragging it down. I've mentioned it before, I use very thin layers of my colored powder and then I go ahead and encapsulate. So as you can see, I'm not adding a lot, I'm just adding enough to give me a good base color and make sure that the opaqueness is good and you don't have any little spots that are see-through. Again, I'm adding another bead of acrylic right above the first one that I laid and I start patting it into place, making sure that I am blending it nicely to the existing powder while keeping the sides nice and tight. You want to make sure you continuously clean the sides so that you don't have to do too much filing at the end. I love, love, love this color. It's so pretty. So definitely recommend if you guys are looking for like a maroon burgundy red. And with these colors, I do like to use smaller beads just because they are so pigmented. If you use larger beads, sometimes it can get really messy. So I always suggest you use smaller beads. It kind of covers less of the nail, which lets you focus more on that tiny little spot versus trying to blend that all out. Now for the index finger, I'm going to be doing the exact same thing that I did on the pinky. So I'm starting off with my black just applying a medium-sized bead of acrylic 
and then I start patting it into place making sure that I'm getting all of the acrylic nice and perfect making sure that it's not leaking into the cuticles I say it because it's really really important you do not want to cause lifting and if it goes into the cuticle area that can definitely cause lifting adding a little bit more of that red right underneath that and I'm not being perfect with this it's definitely more of like a marbleized design so you can absolutely just pat it on there and you're good to go and it almost kind of camouflages any harsh lines with that glitter so like I said, you don't really have to worry about that. Adding the same fine red glitter and then the chunky one over top and then adding it to that tip. Once I'm done with my base design, I am going ahead and encapsulating. For this step, I am using my clear acrylic from Not Polish. And I did forget to mention I am using my Not Polish acrylic brush in the size 12. It's been my go-to lately. I definitely love the size. I'm going to be trying out the bigger one too for any of you guys that are curious. Along with that, I'm using the Not Polish monomer. I mentioned this before in the first video that I used it. In concoction with their powders, it is bomb formula super super buttery definitely recommend the two together so i'm gonna go ahead and continue to encapsulate those now specifically focusing on that glitter now you want to make sure you press the acrylic into it nicely so that it seeps into all the little crevices and little chunks of glitter and i'm gonna go ahead and repeat that on the rest of the nails Now getting into our filing, I am starting off with my Kiara Sky Rechargeable e-file. I have her at about 8 to 9,000 RPMs. Along with that, I'm using their 5-in-1 carbide bit. This one is medium grit in the color silver. They have tons of really cute colors to choose from, so make sure you guys check them out. Very inexpensive in my opinion because they do last a long time. So definitely recommend them in that aspect as well. I'm starting off by filing the cuticle area, making sure that it is nice and flush to the natural nail. I love using my e-file for this specific step because sometimes it can be really, really complicated to get in that such small area with a hand file. So if you are comfortable with your e-file, definitely recommend this instead of your hand file. Once I'm done with the cuticle area, I'm moving on to the rest of the nail and I am using my 
Tammy Taylor Peel and Stick file and filing the sides to perfect that shape. And then I go directly over the surface of the nail, making sure that I am filing it nice and perfect. I love using my hand file. I've been using it in my last few videos. I'm sure you guys have noticed. It's been my go-to. I feel like I get everything done a lot quicker and you get such an even transition from the cuticle area down to the tip with your hand file. You have better motion of it versus an e-file so i feel like it is a better alternative specifically for long nails so i'm just going vertically up and down making sure that i'm filing with the same amount of pressure throughout the entire nail because you do not want to over file one side or the other And as I always preach, flip the hand around to look at the nails from the client's perspective and then file that tip into the perfect shape. This allows you to look at the nails from a different perspective than what you can see from your angle. So I always, always say in my videos, make sure you look at the nails from every possible angle. I'm constantly turning the finger side to side when I'm filing as well, just to make sure that I'm getting everything nice and perfect. Next, I'm going in with my buffer from Profiles Backstage. This is a must, specifically when you are doing nail art. I definitely recommend do not skip this step. This makes the nail super, super smooth, and that is the perfect surface you want to work on when doing nail art. Everything will glide on there perfectly, and you will not struggle with whatever you are creating nail art with. So definitely recommend these buffers if you are looking for some really good ones. Now I'm going in with a lint-free wipe and some swipe and just cleaning the surface of the nail, making sure everything is nice and clean, nice and dust-free for our nail art application. Now getting right into the nail art, I am using my go-to 3D nail art brush. This one is linked in my Amazon storefront. It is my OG brush. It's so messed up, but it works perfectly great. So I will continue to use it until it fully dies on me. So my inspiration for this nail specifically was kind of to get a dying rose. <laughs> and so the way I came about this was I figured I would do a completely black rose with the color dripping out of it. So if you guys are wondering what the dripping is, it's not blood, it's supposed to be the color of the rose dripping out of it. So it's basically dying and the color is seeping off of it, if that makes sense. So I'm starting off with my petals. I start with one big one and then I kind of go around and I always start with three petals as my base. So I did one off to the right, one up top in the middle, and then the other one is off to like the left corner, which is the one that I'm working on right now. So the way I do my petals, and I've done videos on roses before, I basically do like an elongated kind of oval shape, and then I start patting it into place, but I focus on the outer edges of that petal. I want the center to be nice and flat so that I can continue to layer more petals on there, if that makes sense. So again, wherever the petal is going to be facing, I push the product onto that direction. So as you can see, this one is definitely, I want the petal to be a lot more thick on the outer corners 
pointing to the left bottom. So I push that product down. And then with this bead, again, I'm doing it in to the top right corner. And so I start pushing that product down that way. A good little tip for the texture of petals is try to dry out your brush as much as possible once you're ready to build out that petal. It'll give it really good texture. The bristles on the brush will help tremendously with that. So the drier your brush is, the more impressions of the bristles it's going to leave on that petal, the cooler the rose is going to turn out. I feel like that's how I get my best roses. And then I'm just doing the center of the rose. I kind of just twirled it. Now I'm adding the drips of red that is dripping off of it. And I'm using that same red color and I'm just doing drips of that, trying to get it as flat as possible. And then I did make sure that the actual drip part was nice and thick. And then I'm adding another one off to the right side. I just start with a dot and then lightly drag that product up into a point coming out of that petal. And then I did add a little bit more um, by the first strip just to give it a little bit more color coming off of it because obviously it's not just going to be two drips. It's going to be coming off of the entire rose. I hope that helped and I hope that made sense. Now I am going to be doing my top coat before I finish off these nails. I needed a good base for the rest of the nail art, so I went ahead and top coated. I'm using Glosset for the pinky and the index finger. That top coat is from Not Polish. And then I'm using Matted around the rose and the middle finger. I kind of wanted a nice contrast for the set just because it does have a lot of glitter and I wanted some of the nail art to stand out. So now I'm using Matted from Not Polish and applying that onto the middle finger. And then very, very gently around the ring finger where the petals and the drips are. And then I'm gonna go ahead and place that in the light for a full minute. And you can see the crazy difference that it makes when you put shiny top coat and when you put matte top coat. The colors change dramatically, like the pinky on the index finger definitely look a lot brighter red. So now I'm adding a little bit of glosset on those drips. I wanted those to stand out. And then I went ahead and left them like that, nice and wet, and then I moved on to the middle finger. For the middle finger, I opted with the best way of saying I hate Valentine's Day. So we are using a little bit of curse words on there. If I offend anybody, I'm so sorry, but I figured this was the easiest way to come across with. I do not like Valentine's Day. So we are spelling out the F word and I'm doing this very, very gently. I mixed red with black just to kind of deepen that red color a little bit. Originally, I was gonna sugar this with glitter, but then I felt like it wasn't gonna look as cute just because the red was gonna be way too vibrant against that maroon color. So I actually figured black would probably look a little bit better. And so I finished writing off the words and before I place it in the light, I am going to be adding a little bit of black powder over top of that just to bring the black out so I didn't have to go back in with black gel paint and it would mattify it all in one and we'd get that nice texture that helps bring out designs like this. And then I did add a little slash on the O just to give it a little bit more feeling. <laughs> But I'm gonna go ahead and finish writing that off. Always, always remember to stabilize your pinky on your other hand and try to find a really good brush. This one is from my Amazon storefront, my go-to, the blue one that I always use. All right, well, now that it is still nice and wet, I'm gonna go ahead and grab some of that black acrylic powder that I used and then just pour it over top. I like to do a few layers of that, so I'll pat it off, let it sink in a little bit, and you can see the shine coming through. So then I add a little bit more. And if I need to, I'll add a third one. 
that basically concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys next time.